Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 38 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that in Australia, the Digital Transformation Agency has become the first government agency to test the use of Microsoft Office 365 in a secure cloud environment and make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips around cloud security. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is kind of an interesting topic I caught this week in the news feed. I'm looking forward to discussing it. Yeah, me too, me too. Uh, so a great opening question would be, will this be the use case followed by the rest of the world then, Dave? Oh God, I hope so. One of the things that uh, kind of struck out at me, number one, that Australia has a digital transformation agency. And I was like, holy crap, that's really uh, progressive uh, for a country to have that. I think the United States it would probably take us 10, 15 years to decide on what to name it, let alone form the, form the organization. And it looks like they have a secure cloud-based environment, which I think is going to be a private cloud. And it looks like they're getting an instance of Microsoft Office 365 that's running on that secure cloud. So this is kind of breaking new ground in terms of people who are looking to do office automation in a secure environment. Because obviously, you know, these days where you have hacks, things like that, lots of information is being disseminated, not necessarily in databases, but in documents people are writing and spreadsheets people are doing. And you know, those sorts of things are really where the risks are. And I think that the ability to kind of put a put a veil of security around those things and encrypt that information, even keep it private, uh, especially if you're in some sort of a, a, a very uh, sensitive organization, like the intelligence organizations, things like that. Ultimately, you're going to need to um, you know figure out an approach to security that's going to work. And it looks like they figured this out. So. One of the things I noticed with Microsoft, they are willing to move into the private cloud environment, certainly with um, with the new private cloud uh, instance of, uh, of, of Azure and some of the other you know systems that are going on. And they're very, very flexible in the way in which they're deploying software. And this is kind of a step in the right direction. So this is kind of unique in the fact that um, we're thinking about office automation in terms of something that should be secure. And I, I can't stress this enough. When you think about email servers being hacked and you know change in the course of elections and things like that, all these things are in essence uh, gonna be very important for us to keep secure going forward. And in essence, the DTA, uh, which is you know something that's new to me that Australia had that, you know, is stepping in the right direction to ensure that they're actually getting the secure that they're looking for, which is which is um, outstanding, I think. Yeah, I mean, Australia, like we've spoken about several times on the Australia show, seem to embrace, you know, not only technology from the, the private sector quite rapidly after, you know, looking at what the rest of the world is doing and just take action, but equally from a, certainly from a government point of view with, uh, you know, building stuff in Azure and uh, Microsoft Stack. So what, what do you think with regards to, you know, other governments then? Where do you see this knock-on effect? Where, if, you were, if you were looking to port this particular, you know, model over from the Australian government to another government, how would you position it to them? Well, I think the intelligence agencies in the states would be uh, would be a prime, you know, consumer of this technology. And I think going forward, we're going to see, uh, you know, lots of, um, you know, intelligence agencies, uh, the Mossad, the, uh, in I, I forget the one in London that they they have, which is in essence the equivalent to the CIA and MI5, yeah, MI5, yeah, and all these really kind of organizations where. Sensitivity of information is actually is absolutely apparent because people will die. You know, if ultimately this stuff slips out. You have to basically double down on security. And if we're going to move into the cloud, in this case, a private cloud, you need to be able to do office automation in an environment that we can be assured that the information won't leak and won't be hacked from the outside world. And if that means, you know, cutting the cords to the internet and doing things internal to the office, I think that's uh, that's well and good in, mo in lots of different use cases. I don't think everybody should do that. And I think Global 2000 organizations have declared that they should have an absolutely an extreme secure environment that costs them, you know, millions more dollars a month. That's that's definitely not moving in the right direction. But there's some use cases where this is warranted. And so I see this being something that they can replicate within the intelligence services, within the military services all over the world. And, you know, anybody who's looking for deep security and, in essence, assurance that documents won't be read, emails won't be read. 
uh, spreadsheets won't be seen, things like that. And I, I was worried about that, you know, as they stick this stuff in Dropbox and things like that, you know, that someone's going to be looking at it that I don't necessarily want to see it. I wouldn't put sensitive information up there. But ultimately, you don't want your information looked at by parties you, you haven't deemed authorized to see it. And I think this is kind of a step in the right direction of not necessarily being paranoid, but, you know, really kind of considering the risk and trying to eliminate the risk where they can be found. Yeah, absolutely. As I always say, 100 percent. In fact, in fact, I've just had an idea. You know, this this Azure and uh, 365 could now be featured in sort of Mission Impossible, where sort of things start blowing up, you know, within the cloud. <laughs> you know, this message will, will expire and explode. And I can see now in 007 that you'll see James Bond logging into his uh, 365 to see his next mission. <laughs> what do you think? I, yeah, I'm sure there's some great sponsorship opportunities out there for the next version of Mission Impossible. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's in essence uh, what we're thinking in terms of how things are gonna be uh, you know, moving going forward. And I think this is gonna be ultimately something that you have to you know, understand that is gonna be a risk out there that has to be mitigated and you have to, in essence, do the right things to ensure that you're going to um, you know, protect your information. And this is gonna be also, I, I think, uh, something that uh, healthcare programs are going to look at, insurance programs will look at, where they have sensitive information, things that have to deal with compliance stuff, things that have to survive audits, things like that. And I think the ability to kind of put office automation systems like 365 and Google Office and those sorts of things in, a, in an auditable kind of a, a, a thing is ultimately going to be the future we're in right now. I mean, office automation you know, it's not word perfect anymore uh, running on our PCs. It's, it's in essence, this very sensitive, massive documents that can be called through and dealt with. They have to be secure. And in their aggregate, they actually mean something that we, we don't understand how they, you know, what they mean. So in other words, we put information out there in documents that, you know, it's going to be petabytes of stuff that an organization exists. We can, dis we can discern patterns from the information to figure out if a stock's going up, to figure out if, uh, you know, the company is going to get sold, things like that, without, without actually looking in an individual document, just kind of culling through the whole thing. And I think those sorts of things with deep data mining, things like that, are opening us to all sorts of risks that we don't necessarily understand exist. And I think we're going to have to, in essence, lock down our uh, office automation systems and um, I'm completely for it if it's warranted. In other words, we have some sort of a use case or reason for doing it. Yeah, it really is. And, and I think it's... Um a very beneficial thing now, Azure and Microsoft, uh, you know, are coming together with a secure cloud option for, say, government agencies and the specialist intelligence agencies and and the healthcare world. I think that really does open this model up for, you know, a lot more organisations and countries to adopt this this principle. And it moves us on nicely, Dave, for our uh, top three tips at the end of the day, of, or the end of the day, <laughs> the end of your day, the start of my day, the end of your Sunday, the start of my Monday. So, you know, it'd be great to find your top three sort of cloud security tips for this week, Dave. That'd be great. Yeah, number one is security is only relative to the time and technology you put into it. So keep that in mind. I mean, people are always saying, well, cloud's not secure, cloud's really secure. And it really kind of depends on how much time and energy and technology you're willing to kind of put into any kind of solution, whether it's cloud, cloud-based, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, or no cloud. Uh, and so we have to kind of get out of this uh, mindset that the technology, the approach that we have, the religion that we have in terms of where we think our IT should exist is really going to be a, a factor to determine how secure the environment is. And the reality is that the environment is only secure as much money and time and energy that you put into it, whether it's in the cloud or not. I have uh, completely secure environments that exist in the public cloud. Um, they're, they're, uh, nothing's hack proof, but they're, they're very close to being hack proof. And I have you know, systems that exist on private cloud that are going to be hugely exposed um, because ultimately the, the people didn't put the time and energy in to lock the things up, to make sure the encryption's up to date, things like that. So keep that in mind. Never be afraid to do audits. One of the things that I think that um, you know this thing is going to have for this organization is the ability to audit the system so we can figure out access systems, who's been in it, who's touched the document, who's edited the document, things like that, to ensure that there's a, you know, that shenanigans aren't occurring and something, uh, you know, is, is occurring that's in essence going to uh, compromise security. And I think that you have to be able to do these audits. People are afraid of them because it does expose some things you're doing wrong, but I think it's important that you understand what you're doing wrong and correct them. Never stop improving security. Security should be continuously improved. People have a tendency to kind of create a, a security instance 
In other words, they kind of lock it in. I'm leveraging identity access management, and that's the way I'm doing it. I'm leveraging this sort of encryption, that's the way I'm doing it. You should always be reviewing the security policies, procedures, and technologies and approaches you're leveraging. And I think as you go forward, ask yourself how things can be improved going forward. So you're attending conferences like Black Hat, you're reading things uh, you know, like the, the CERN, Computer Emissions Response Team, CERT, excuse me, who will, uh, in essence, alert you to new ways in doing security, platform exposures, things like that, and you're continuously locking things down. The best security is a proactive security. Great three tips there, Dave. Really great three tips. I hope everyone's got some value out of that. That was awesome. I know I have. And Dave, look, thanks for being part of the Australia show again this week. Another stellar performance. It's always a pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show, although I went down the 007 route when it comes to uh, Azure 365. Uh, so, you know, that's just me. I've got a bit of humans to the show. But um, anyway, so look, you can get David on Twitter, at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Should be some blue graphics around there somewhere. Uh, we're on Instagram as well, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Facebook, all the social media platforms. Come and join us. Come and chat with Dave as well. Happily answer questions and connect you with the right things that are going out there in the world of cloud computing at the moment thanks for watching remember to like subscribe comment and share this channel and videos with your friends and with your colleagues and remember to click the notification bell as well which is very important and i think it's uh, only fair to say until next week